Hey folks, Justin Seitz here from AutomatingOSINT.com and this is the second video in a series of videos designed to teach the non-coder or someone with very little experience in writing code how to write Python and specifically to get you up to speed so that you can begin automating some OSINT tasks. Now in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a little bit about data and how Python handles data. And the first concept I want you to understand is what a variable is. So a variable is just a placeholder for information. And really what they're useful for is being able to store a piece of information and reuse it again later, for example. So if we know what the Twitter URL is, twitter.com, instead of having to write out twitter.com every time we want to use it, we would just store it in a, in, a, in a variable and then we could use it everywhere in our script by referencing that variable. The other thing to note is uh, what an integer and a float are. So an integer is just a negative or positive whole number. And of course, a float is a fraction of a number represented with a decimal place. Now, I'm terrible at math, so you can see I only remembered the first two decimal places of pi, but you get the general idea. Now, we also have what are called strings. And strings are, of course, words or text that we want to store. So in this case, we've put my name, and you'll notice a string is uh, stored by placing uh, the double quotes or single quotes around it. That's how Python knows that you're dealing with a string. Now we're going to talk about some of the more critical data structures in Python. One of them is what's called a dictionary and really they should have called this a filing cabinet instead of a dictionary because how a dictionary works is you can set keys which would be the labels on your file folders and then in those keys allows you to store a value. So this would be the piece of paper that goes in your folder. Now, anytime you see a curly brackets, like you see on line 14 right there, you know you're dealing with a dictionary. So in this case, what we've done is set up three separate file folders, first name, last name, and email, and we've stored values in them, Justin, sites, my last name, and of course my email address. And that's exactly how you can then reference that dictionary is anytime you want to know what my first name, the value of my first name is, you can reference it directly by hitting that first name key. So this is a very powerful data structure because we can track an infinite amount of uh, keys and values and of course we can store other pieces of information in these dictionaries and pull them back out. And you're going to see that when we're working with APIs, such as the Twitter API, we are primarily going to be dealing with dictionaries because that's how the information comes back. So I definitely want you to focus on uh, dictionaries and, and think about this as we move forward, that these are really important and it's something you kind of have to get a handle on, but it's not that complicated when you think about the filing cabinet example. So the next thing you're going to see often is what's called a list. And a list would also be called an array in other programming languages. But a list is just a sequential list of items, much like a shopping list as you see right here. So your shopping list has got apples, bananas, bread, and milk. We can actually walk through each member of that list and say, okay, we want to print out our shopping list. So all we're doing is actually walking through that list and we're assigning the list value item in shopping item. So for example, when that loop runs that I show you there on line 26, it's going to print out apples, bananas, bread, and milk. So that's how we can actually walk through a list and retrieve all of the items. But we can also reference specific offsets in that list. So if we just wanted to know what the first item is, and lists are zero referenced, meaning the first item is actually item zero. So if we wanted to know what the first item was, uh, we would just say list variable square bracket and then zero, which would give us apples. If we did one, we'd get bananas, for example. So again, lists are something that you're going to see a lot of uh, because, again, a lot of APIs are going to return things in lists. For example, if we retrieve a bunch of tweets from the Twitter API, of course, it's going to return to us a list of tweets. We're going to walk through that list. And inside of that list, might be stored dictionaries or other data types. So you can begin to see how all of these uh, data structures kind of play well together. The last one that we're going to cover is what's called a tuple. So for the most part, tuples operate just like lists. You can see that we use uh, the normal parentheses to denote a tuple, whereas a list we use square brackets. 
So we have parentheses here. Now a tuple operates much like a list except it's not quite as flexible. So there's uh, a bunch of helper functions and other things that you can do with lists that you can't do with tuples, but they're still used in a lot of different places. You're going to see them, so it's important for you to know what they are. Now, you've heard me talk about the Twitter API a number of times, so why don't we start to figure out what this magical JSON or JSON, what this actually is and how it relates to our data structures that we've covered and the Twitter API. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to cover that in the next video. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email at justin at automatingosint.com. Definitely join the mailing list so that you know when these videos come out and you're following along with the blog, which is going to teach you some OSINT techniques. And you, of course, can reach all of that at automatingosint.com. Thank you very much, and we'll chat soon.